Hey there, what's happening YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into the channel today, right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. So today we're gonna have a little bit more of a candid conversation about an issue that we're having here in the automotive industry, and that's us as technicians being rushed. Why are we being rushed so much to do the specialized work that we are trained to do on everybody's vehicle? We're gonna get into a couple of those questions today, as well as hopefully some insight from me on how to help get around that. So one of the biggest issues we have in the industry today is that everybody is on a right now kind of a time frame and that really just does not work. Right now the automotive industry we've got all kinds of issues from parts delays to recalls to manufacturers having technical service bulletins that aren't prepared yet or something along those lines and this is just in the automotive market for dealerships. When you're talking about the automotive industry for independence, you know, those manufacturers and issues are compounded by 10 because you're working on cars that are so much older. So you've got a right now mentality out of a customer. You've got their cars coming in left and right. Everybody is competing these days to have the better prices for their shop. Hourly rates are going down, they're going up. You have to keep competitive in today's atmosphere. If you don't, then you're gonna get run by the wayside, or if you don't manage it correctly, you're gonna get a way bigger wave and an over influx of customers come in than your shop will be able to handle. One of the shops that I've been talking to recently, they've been having an issue with having too many customers. And that is just as bad of an issue as having not very many customers at all. When you've got too many customers going on here, you, their cars tend to sit a little bit longer. And as I said, with everybody having that, I want my stuff right down now kind of mentality, then you're gonna have a whole lot of upset customers. The customers these days are not wanting to wait for their cars for over a week anymore. So if you guys are having these over influx of customers and you aren't able to keep up on their vehicles and get them in and out of your service department within a week, then you need to make some changes in the industry. So in your section of, or your area, you're getting too much of the flow. So what do you need to do? You either need to be specialized and you need to go on a case by case basis to where, you know, we really don't have time to work on your car today or this week and we might have to put you off. Don't tell them, just bring it here and bring it and set it in the back lot and we'll get to it when we get to it because you're just gonna get upset customers at that point. You need to either work on managing the flow of incoming service by telling those people up front, or you can cut this off real quick by doing another thing. You can just adjust your hourly rate higher. When you adjust your hourly rate higher, that's gonna keep out some of the customers, unfortunately the ones that are smaller cost, smaller people that are coming into the shop, but that's gonna be able to weed out a lot of that over influx also. You do this without having to tell people or turn them away. You raise your hourly rate and that's gonna bring some of that workload down to a more manageable level. Now, if you're just in the point of being a technician, you may not have any handle on that. When your shop becomes too overcrowded with work, you're gonna be the one who comes on the short end of the stick. Your manager or service writer is gonna be pushing these jobs on you and pushing you to get more done in a quicker time frame, get these things in, get them out, maybe even working overtime. Now, if you're a younger guy and you're really efficient and you really wanna work extra hours, yes, that's nice being able to have that extra work there to be able to get done lots of hours, rack up all the work you can while you can, while you really enjoy it when you're younger, working all that overtime. Me personally, I'm already here for 43 hours a week, maybe up towards 50, 55 if I have to work on a Saturday once every month or so. I don't like working an extra three hours a night because, well, I've got the YouTube thing, but I also like enjoying my time at home with family. So having your manager or your service writer push you to do more overtime, that's one of those things you guys need to nip in the butt 
really quick because the more you guys push over to be able to do in those things, it's going to be just implied that, oh yeah, he's fine. He's going to be able to stave after and catch up on everything. What happens that one week when either you get sick, you want to go on vacation, things back up. And when you come back from vacation, things are even worse. So having that work back up on you, just because you decide to take on more work, you need to think more down the line to be able to see, am I gonna be able to handle this work in the future? The biggest piece of advice that I can give you as a technician is don't let anybody rush you. When you start getting rushed, either by the service manager, maybe even the sales staff is rushing to say, oh, I've gotta get this car out and done by five o'clock because I've got somebody that is coming in from Indiana and they have to buy it tonight. It has to be done. Do not get rushed. When you start getting rushed, especially as newer technicians, and you may or may not know this, you start getting rushed, you do more, and that long list of things that needs done on the car ends up missing one or two things, and then later down the road, it's gonna come and bite you in the butt, and you start making mistakes. Mistakes in this industry are way, way worse than anything else. Not getting hours, or being behind on some of your productivity, or just you know not getting the kind of jobs you want. You know those are bad things, but they're not nearly as bad as negative feedback or making mistakes. When you have to do these comebacks, that is the worst thing a technician can have as a comeback, because not only have you done this job once, you're going to do this job again. You're going to have to diagnose it a second time because you probably didn't diagnose it right the first time and you're going to have to fix that job for free I might add you don't want to be in this job doing anything for free so when you get rushed by anybody whether it be the service manager service writer salesperson uncle joe standing at the back door which is another big pet peeve of mine don't let customers hover over you while you work just stand there stare at them nicely and say I'm doing my best, please have a seat up front. Be as nice as you can be. I know us as technicians, that's not really our job to do that, but it's one of my biggest pet peeves. Don't be rushed by anybody. Today was one of those days. I had one of the sales staff come up to me at the very end of the day and say, hey, I've got this vehicle, it's sold. This is at 5.15, by the way, we close at 5.30. I've got this vehicle sold, it's got a recall on it. We're trying to sell it as a certified vehicle inspection and it needs to go out tonight. They're visiting with people from out of state. All right, so I look at it, I go through it and I do the recall. Now I'm also looking through the vehicle and noticing a couple of other things haven't been done yet. So I note that and I point that out and they come back and they're rushing me to go through my inspection process quickly because the people are done out of finance and they really need to get on the road. I have to simply reply to them, if you guys want this vehicle sold as a certified pre-owned vehicle, I have to put my signature onto this repair order. If you don't let me get through the repair order and through this inspection process exactly how I see fit, then it will not be getting my signature. If you guys don't like that, then you can either give it to another technician tomorrow because there are no longer any other ones here in the building, or you can just suck it. And that's pretty much the uh, mentality that you have to have to some of these people in the, the fact that they're wanting you to rush to do your job faster than you really need to do it. There's plenty of work to do. There's no need to rush in this industry. I know the flat rate system kind of has you push from time to time to get things done faster and faster, more efficient, but you know what? Don't make mistakes. Know your limits on how fast you can do things efficiently and get them done without mistakes. And if anybody's trying to push you like the sales staff was me today, tell them that you aren't gonna be rushing perfection and that's what they get when they get the quality of work from me. When I go through these vehicles, I have to go down through this checklist and it has to literally meet everything. Because like I said, if there's a mistake down the road, who's it gonna go to? The last person who's put their signature or their stamp of approval on anything that that car has had. In the, let's say, aeronautic in industry with airplanes and such, 
they have very, very specific log books with all of their airplanes, every single piece of maintenance that gets done. If one of these planes happens to have an issue, it's not like they can just pull over off the side of the road. No, a plane's going down and somebody's probably gonna die. So everything is documented. Who do they go back to? The last technician who touched that plane is the one who's getting blamed for literally everything. That's where the automotive industry is going to. Their logging system is getting more detailed and more detailed. People are getting you know, more strict with what's going on with their vehicle. So they're gonna be coming back to the last person who touched it. Lawsuits might happen. Don't make mistakes. Don't get rushed. One last piece of advice I might have for you is to make some peace with those people who might be the ones rushing you in your specific job. Go to your service writer, go to your service manager or the sales staff, one of those people who are rushing you all the time and have a sit down with them. Sit down and say, hey, you don't like it when I come up to your position, you've got a customer in front of you and I'm trying to get an answer like, hey, I need an answer on this ticket like right now. You know, I have to be able to get these vehicles in and out. I'm working flat right here, hurry, come on, come on, come on. I don't do that to you. These vehicles that are back here in my bays, these are my customers. You guys are my customer who gives me a repair order to fix this vehicle. You guys hired me for what I do and how I do it. That's why you pay me the money. If you don't like how I do things, the kind of service that I give this dealership or give this shop, then maybe you should find somebody else. If you trust me to do my job, let me do my job in the way that I do it. Now, everything in between, feel free to come up and have a conversation in the off points, but don't be rushing me to do my job the way you think that I should do it. Stand your ground and do your job the way you think it should be done the right way the first time without mistakes. Well folks, that's about enough ranting from the Rust Belt today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little rant and this little content coming in between a couple of the other videos. We've got all kinds of other things coming out here over the next week or so. All kinds of nifty tools coming your way. Duramax content, maybe even some more shop comparisons. We're gonna be going up to Schwartz Creek, Michigan this weekend, be able to pick up my Duramax finally get that thing back home so I can enjoy it. And then I'm also gonna be talking with Matt, the owner of Diesel Pros up there again. And we're gonna be going over some differences between automotive shops like this one, and then a big diesel shop up there in Michigan. Show you guys some of the differences between the two. Maybe if you're wanting to get into the industry, maybe you'll like to see the differences between the automotive side, standard cars, or the diesel and heavy line side. Hopefully you enjoyed this content. If you did, hit that thumbs up. Make sure you turn on the bell notification so you get notified when I come out with cool, awesome content just like this one. I appreciate it. Thanks again, and as always, you guys stay awesome.